Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining episode four of Knowledge and Know-How with NetApp Support. We're really excited you joined us today. Um, the content we're going to share was actually put together as a result of feedback and a customer request that we received from one of our pre previous episodes. Um, so again, this is the fourth episode of our webinar series. We will share a link to the other three. So if you haven't been able to attend any, um, you'll have a chance to go back and look at those. Um, so next slide, please. So my name is Dwight Cranford. I'm on the leadership team here in the NetApp Support Center. Um, presenting today is Elliot Ekton. He's an escalation engineer who's been at NetApp for over seven years. Uh, Elliot has a broad scope of knowledge and is currently, he specializes in our networking vertical. We also have a couple of panelists who are going to help us, uh, if needed, answer some of the questions you may have. Uh, Omar Danulos and August Ritchie, and they're both also escalation engineers at NetApp. You can go to the next slide. So just a high level of why we're doing this webinar series. Uh, we want to be proactive and build a partnership with you, our customers, outside of just working cases and resolving issues. Those are typically the only times we, we talk to our customers. So we're trying to change that a bit and, and get out in front and, and work, you know, more proactive so that maybe you won't run into those issues that we're having to resolve um, when working cases. So we want to share information regarding our products, such as best practices, maybe even some tips and tricks, and again, help you to avoid running into the, some of the common issues that we see in the support center. Um, so for the webinar today, it is a live webinar. Feel free to ask questions. You can use the chat. Uh, make sure you address all panelists in the chat window. Um, we do have it protected for secure and privacy concerns, so only the panelists will be able to see those questions. But please make sure you address all panelists. Also, the webinar is being recorded, and at the conclusion, we will send out a copy of the slides and also a recording of this webinar. Uh, we will also get it posted to our YouTube channel, and again, the link will be included in this presentation. So with that, Elliot, I'm going to let you take it away. All right, thanks a lot. Welcome, everybody. Uh, like he said, my name is Elliot Acton. I am an escalation engineer specializing in NAS protocols. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing DNS load balancing, uh, specifically off-box versus on-box. And we'll go over how to configure those, uh, how they work, and we'll also go over a few caveats where it may not be the best solution. Uh, with all that being said, um, hopefully by the time uh, we're done with this presentation, you'll be able to walk away with a deeper understanding of the options you have available to you for DNS. Uh, but more importantly, we hope you leave here knowing the benefits that ONTAP's native OnBox DNS load balancing can provide. So with that being said, let's get started. So DNS load balancing methods. But before we go into DNS load balancing methods, we should answer the question, why load balance DNS? So on the screen, you see we have a four node cluster. Um, there is a lift on each node, but only node two has SVM1. Uh, without load balancing, every single client that's trying to access the SVM1 node space is going to hit node two. Now, obviously this is gonna overburden the network stack, but less obvious is the user space processes that facilitate things like authentication, vScan, F policy, et cetera, those can overrun your CPUs. Uh, this can lead to things like performance issues due to delayed vScan or F policy requests, slow or no authentication. And if it's no authentication, obviously you're not gonna be able to access your data. And essentially any process that needs CPU time on node two can be uh, burdened by this. So you have three nodes not doing anything and one node doing everything. So node two is not very happy and nodes one, three, and four are just fine. So this is why we load balance. So now you see we have stretched the, uh, put the four lists all in the same namespace. And this allows the client to utilize the other network stacks and CPUs in the cluster. Um, this not only distributes the network traffic, but also distributes the CPU workload across all the hardware. You paid for four nodes, why not use all four nodes hardware to get your work done. So 
So to kind of overview of why do we load balance performance, obvious one is increased bandwidth by distributing the network traffic across all nodes in the cluster. The less obvious one is you distribute user space processes for authentication, vScan, F policy, things like that across all the uh, nodes in the cluster. You get to make utilization of all the hardware that you paid for. Um, like I said earlier, why you only use uh, one node's hardware when you can use the, all four in the cluster. And money, um, time is money. We actually have a customer that invests a good amount of money and their that team's uh, sole purpose is to shave a millisecond off here or a microsecond off there. And when I asked them why they want to do that, they said that those milliseconds or microseconds, when you extrapolate it over time, can lead to millions of dollars in saved uh, money. So we're going to go over the two types of load balancing, off-box and on-box. We are going to start with off-box DNS load balancing, uh, specifically round robin uh, set up in Windows. But do note that off-box can be an appliance like an F5 or a DNS service, it doesn't have to be Windows DNS. Uh, but for this presentation, we are gonna be using Windows DNS. Round Robin is extremely simple to set up. Uh, there's no extra configuration needed in ONTAP. Um, the DNS circle essentially just cycles through the A and the quad A records associated with the DNS host name. And for it to do that, all you have to do is add another host name to the A records. The big drawback, for round robin is it does not consider the load on individual NetApp nodes. So it could over, end up overburdening, overburdening a uh, overutilized node. So in the top box, you see we have two lifts and this is the ONTAP CLI. We have lift one, lift two, both on, node, on different nodes, uh, one ending in dot one four one and one ending in dot one four two. And in the bottom box, we have the DNS uh, manager. And you can see in the name column, we have two SVM2s. So we have two SVM2.demo.netup.com FQDNs. But you can see in the data column, we have two different IPs. Uh, what you don't see here is we have also set the TTL on these uh, DNS entries to 15 seconds, and that is per Microsoft best practices. And we do have a demo coming up here in a couple slides showing you how to actually set up Round Robin. So the big takeaway from this slide here, uh, it kind of shows you how Round Robin works. You can see that uh, NS lookup for SVM2 was uh, executed. And you'll notice that it returns both addresses, but it's the one on top that counts. The client is always gonna pick the one that's on top. So a subsequent um, NS lookup for the same thing actually return dot one four one the next time. So it just kind of bounces back and forth between the two. With that being said, we're going to play a short demo on how to set up Microsoft DNS round robin. This is a short tutorial on how to set up DNS load balancing using only Microsoft DNS and without leveraging ONTAP DNS load balancing. First, we'll open the DNS management panel in Windows. Next, we'll create an A record for our first lift. Next, we'll create a second A record for the second LIF IP pointing to the same FQDN. Now, we'll enable the advanced view and change the TTL on both records to 15 seconds. This will allow clients that make multiple connections at least 15 seconds apart the chance to hit a different node in the cluster. Set this one to 15. Now we'll set the second one to 15 as well.
Now we'll use NSLOOKUP against sbm1.netup.com to show how Microsoft DNS will return both the records, alternating which record is returned. All right, so the important takeaway on this is you saw that the uh, NSLOOKUP it is hitting DC1, the DNS server, uh, but it is returning a different top IP here. So the first two returned .132, but the last one returned .131. So with that, we'll take a quick break and see if there's any questions on DNS round robin or any questions in general from the audience. All right, again, if you have questions, please put them in the chat, um, address them to all panelists, and we'll make sure we get those answered during the presentation. Uh, Elliot, we do have one question uh, from Lorraine, and she wants to know, can a single lift be returned for multiple host names? Can a single lift be returned for multiple host names? Correct. Okay. Uh, I don't see how this is possible from a NetApp perspective. Definitely possible for DNS, just not from NetApp perspective. Uh, we can only associate one host name to our lists. All right. And then uh, another question. Tannen would like to know what happens in round and robin if the lift is down or unreachable? So if the lift is down, we expect the client to retry and fail uh, since that is the record return from when they did the lookup. Unless the client does look up again and gets a lift that is up, one of the other lifts that is associated with that SVM or with that FQDN, I should say. So, but if it is down, you will have a failure. Okay. And then uh, one last question currently in the queue is from uh, Wilson wants to know, does NetApp partner with any external DNS server vendors to test their functionality with ONTAP? Uh, no, not really. Uh, we would behave like any other server or storage. Uh, ideally, DNS just helps clients resolve the FQDN um, to an IP address. Obviously, DNS has more to it than that, but that's what we're focused on here. So, All right. And again, if you have questions, please put them in the chat, address them to all panelists. And Elliot, I think we can move on. All right. So now we will move on to ONTAP's Onbox DNS load balancing. I like to call this one smart load balancing because it takes into account the network throughput and the CPU utilization within the cluster and pipes that through an algorithm and will return what it believes will provide the best performance for that connection. There's only two options uh, that you have to configure in ONTAP. You have to enable a listener so we can open port 53 on one of the lifts in the SVM. And then you have to add the lifts to a DNS zone. So in this slide, lift one is configured as the listener, but lifts one, two, three, and four are all eligible to be returned uh, in the DNS reply. So we don't wanna to go too much into the actual algorithm, um, but for those of you who are curious, um, it's a CPU weight and a network throughput weight, um, and then they do some other stuff and, and come up with a final weight, and that's how they, they determine which lift to return. So what's this look like on the wire? So a client is gonna make a DNS call to his configured DNS server. Um, and in this one, they're looking for svm1.demo.netapp.com. The DNS server knows that it has a delegation for that zone and that it should reach out to this lift. So it asks ONTAP for an A record for svm1.demo.netapp.com. Uh, ONTAP does its calculations with the algorithm and then it will return the result back to the DNS server. Notice it doesn't return it to the client directly. It will return it back to the DNS server. And then the DNS server will return that back to the client for us. And then the client will make a connection to the lift that was returned from the algorithm. So there are, you do have to configure uh, some things in Windows DNS to facilitate this. Um, it's gonna be one of three things. You either need a DNS delegation, a stub zone, or a conditional forwarder. And this flow chart here, we suggest you get with your uh, DNS team 
but it's a pretty simple uh, flow chart to figure out which one you need to configure. And then your DNS team can uh, get that configuration made for you. So these are the two ONTAP CLI commands to uh, basically make those configurations. Like I said, there's, you only have to create a DNS zone, add lists to the zone, and then uh, create one or more DNS listeners. So what's that look like? In the top, we see that uh, two lists, two different nodes, but they're in the same DNS zone, svm1.demo.netup.com. Uh, it doesn't show it in this part, but they're also configured to be DNS listeners. And in the bottom box, if you can see here, we have the demo.netup.com domain, and then we have a DNS delegated zone for SVM1. And that pops up here, and you can see that we have put these two lifts as the lifts to reach out for. So two-step configuration, one on the ONTAP side and one on the Microsoft side. And here is a quick presentation on how to do that. Today we will be demonstrating the DNS load balancing feature in Data ONTAP. First, we'll begin by showing the configuration in ONTAP for DNS load balancing. Here we have our SVM1 configured with two lists, neither of which have been associated with a DNS zone or are configured to listen or respond to DNS queries. We will now configure each interface to associate them with the svm1.netapp.com FQDN and enable them to listen and respond to DNS queries for the FQDN. Setting the DNS zone for the LIF allows the LIF IP to be returned when a query for the associated FQDN is received. Setting the listen for DNS query to true will allow that LIF to service DNS queries. Here is that configuration again after it's been set. Now we'll send a query directly to the first LIF and see if our queries are responded to and with what IP. As you can see, the IP returned by ONTAP changes depending on which LIF the load balancing algorithm chooses. Now we'll point our queries to the second LIF configured on the SVM. As you can see, this LIF does the same thing and we will return the IPs previously configured for that FQDN. So on this last screen, uh, it kind of went through it fast, um, but the bottom one is the actual re result that is returning. Uh, and the top one is what's responding. So you can see that, you know, we're 132, it returned 131, 131, but it also returned 132 up here. So it is bouncing back and forth between them. Uh, let's go to step two of this configuration, and that is gonna be setting up the DNS delegation. This tutorial will show how to set up DNS load balancing using a Microsoft DNS delegation record in conjunction with ONTAP DNS load balancing. First, we'll show the current ONTAP DNS load balancing configuration. For a walkthrough on configuring DNS load balancing in ONTAP, please see the previous video on that topic. As we can see here, we have two lifts in the pool to be returned for the svm1.netup.com FQDN and LIF1 has been configured to listen for and respond to DNS queries. Now we'll open our DNS management console and create a delegation. We'll enter the FQDN for the ONTAP LIFs and delegate this to LIF1, the LIF configured to listen for DNS queries.
Now that we've configured the delegation, we can use NSLOOKUP to see which LIF IP gets returned from ONTAP. All right, so in this one, compared to the other one, you can see that the response is actually coming from the DC. Uh, and that goes back to that slide where I showed you how it looks on the wire, where the DNS um, basically forwards the request to us and then we send it back to the DNS server and the DNS server goes to the client. But you can also see here that it is flipping between the two IP addresses that are in that SVM zone. So that pretty much covers how to configure it. Um, well, there is one gotcha. Um, if you are using NFS version four and you're using referrals, um, it'll still go through the ONTAP uh, DNS load balancing process, but that's gonna be overridden because once the IP is returned and it connects to port 2049 to start doing NFS traffic and you're not on a local lift, uh, you will get a referral to go to a different lift that's on the same node as the target volume. But that's the only time when we don't believe this is going to uh, improve your performance. Um, and it's just keep in mind that it's not always the network stack that's going to be improved. You're also going to have your user space processes. So your vSCAN, your FPolicy, all that good stuff is going to very well perform better. All right, so this link right here, uh, you'll want to take a look at this. This is the TR. It goes into much greater depth on DNS load balancing and how it works. And if you do decide to implement DNS load balancing in ONTAP, there is a KB link that just tells you what data to gather before you open a support ticket so we can help you resolve your issue quicker. So let's kind of wrap it up and compare off box versus on box. Off box, uh, it's nice because no configuration is needed in ONTAP, uh, but keep aware that it is kind of dumb load balancing. It's not aware of the load in the ONTAP nodes, so it could overburden a, uh, a basically a cooked node in the cluster. Uh, it does require extra configuration on the DNS server for round robin, but as you saw, it's very, very little. Um, if you're gonna go the appliance route, you do have extra hardware costs. So if you wanna go with an F5 or something like that, uh, on box. So there is more configuration you must do. You have to configure a DNS zone and then enable one or more listeners. Um, it uses a patented algorithm to return the node that should provide the best performance. Uh, it does also require extra configuration on the DNS server, but the best part is it's included in ONTAP. There's no license needed for it and you get intelligent load balancing uh, just straight out of the box. So with that being said, we will open it up for questions. Yeah, we did have one question in the queue. I think uh, August is going to answer this one, but uh, just so everyone can hear, uh, AP asked, does this raise usage on the backend NetApp switches? That's a great question. Uh, so this can result in increased usage on the backend switch. Where it becomes more beneficial is when you're trying to distribute load across what we call the end blade or the network blade. So if the benefits of distributing the load across the network blade outweigh the cost of the indirect access, it's usually a great idea to enable DNS load balancing. Okay. Um, and then Martin wants to know, GUI options. Can I configure this from System Manager since I don't use the CLI very much? Uh, no, there's currently System Manager does not allow you to set this up uh, via the GUI. So you're going to have to uh, log in and get your ONTAP CLI foo down to get this going. But it's, it's straightforward. Remember, Tab is your friend. Okay. And then uh, George had a question, what process is ONTAP using to service the DNS request? Uh, we use NAMED, uh, which is BIND9. Okay. And then uh, Michael has a question, is there a best practice or recommendation which options should be used? 
um, given a customer, I want to be able to support either. Uh, could you put your email in the chat and we can kind of clarify that question offline and we can have that discussion. Okay. So Michael, if you'll just, uh, there you go. Perfect. We got it. Um, one other question from Emmett. We recently had a case where authentication login storms were hammering a single node. Would this be a good strategy to spread the authentication load to other nodes? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, and the reason why is that that slide where I said the less obvious benefit of this is you free up your CPUs to, um, you know, you do those user space processes like SecD, which does authentication and stuff like that. Uh, so being able to spread out that load across the cluster is definitely going to give you a performance in, increase. So yes, it would have helped. And then uh, Wyatt's why Wyatt said recommendations for large 10 node clus clusters for VMware data stores using NFS. Uh, once again, I'll have you put your email in the chat and we'll have that discussion offline. That sounds like a kind of a deep conversation. Okay. I got it. Thank you very much. All right, so we still have some time. Um, if there's any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Address them to all panelists. We've, we'll, uh, we'll get those answered here if we can. Um, Elliot, if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, we're, we are going to wrap things up. So I'm not going to take up the whole hour today. We'll give you a little time back. Um, again, if you have questions, put them in there. We do have time to answer them. Um, after the session, after the webinar, you're going to receive a survey please take a few minutes to, to provide feedback. We want to make these um, webinars as useful as possible. We want to talk about things that you want to hear about. Again, today's uh, discussion was actually from one of these survey results. We will put the content together and, and present it to you. So it's just a couple questions. Um, take a few minutes, fill it out, send it in. Uh, also, you can email us. We do have uh, an email address, ng-supportwebinars at netapp.com. Um, you can give us feedback there. You can uh, give us suggestions for content again for upcoming webinars. Um, so feel free to use that email address to get in touch with us. I mentioned a little earlier, episodes one through three are on a playlist on our YouTube NetApp KB TV channel. Um, the link is provided here and you will get this presentation. You'll be able to click the link and, and go see the other three. We will have this one out there as well as soon as it's available. Um, some upcoming events. So we will work on episode five. Uh, it'll be coming out probably toward the end of July. We're still determining what content we want to present in that. Again, it's a great time to fill out the survey. Let us know what you want to hear. We may be able to present that uh, during the next episode. We're also working on some um, regional support conferences. Um, so these are going to be where we bring in customers on site to one of our briefing centers. You sit shoulder to shoulders with experts such as um, August and Omar and Elliot and go through labs and, and discuss uh, topics and products. And, but we want to do it on an, at the briefing center in site. So we want to be face to face, let you meet our experts, let you work with our experts. Obviously, these are delayed a bit, uh, given things that we're going through in the world today. Um, we are working on those, and we do plan to do some of those sometime in 2020. Um, I don't see any more questions in the queue. Um, so, Wyatt and Michael, we will reach out to you offline. We'll shoot you an email and, and have those discussions with you all and get your questions answered. Um, and again, if there's nothing else, we do appreciate everyone joining the webinar today. We hope you're getting some stuff out of these. Um, feel free to go, please go through and, and watch episodes one through three and, and give us some feedback on any of those and provide the content you want us to talk about in our upcoming webinar series or episodes. And if there's nothing else, we thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.